I'm not even joking when I say I'm having nightmares. But Atalanta have to be looking out for the top four finish. Mm. When relegation comes <laughs> for relegation you. Relegation comes for you, bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> You know how much worse you say when we're actually live? You think that's bad? Oh my God. All Just right. the three of us. Nick, you're laughing over there. Mr. Rique, producer. Rique, Mr. Rique, producer Rique. is laughing over there. I thought I Mr. Producer know. was Enrico. Yeah, but, but he's, he's gone and now it's the second, the second in command. It's Mr. Nick. Molinari. Yeah, Molinari. Molinari's our cameraman. Molinari. Yeah. How you doing, Mr. Molinari? There we go. You can switch on your on yourself, Nick. Did you show yourself, Mr. Molinari? Yeah, show it. Show it. Let me see. Can you see? Uh, he was doing the duck shows before. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> Nicky boy. That's Nicky. Oh, Nicky, Nicky boy. Nicky boy. <laughs> Mike, uh, the, we watched the the Torino game here. What a thrilling match, Juventus mm. Torino. One of the best first halves we've seen in a while, just for the amount of goals, the back and forth. Mike was going crazy. He thought you were really pushing for Torino. Uh, so towards much. the end, you thought that they could be able to nick something, but I gotta stop playing some bets. That's uh... <laughs> you don't bet. <laughs> now, not anymore. <laughs> after after today's match, so give me the up and down because I don't even see the eyes. So Torino scored first, like two minutes in, no. three minutes in, uh, and then Juventus were able to come back into the match, and Torino went up again, two one. Sanabria scored a beautiful goal. I'm, I'm telling you, Sanabria is such an underrated player. He does so much work for the team, even be besides the goal, because we were talking about him before that. But just the way he holds up the, the ball, the way that they play. Torino in general, Juric's team comes out and plays good football. And they are they have some players that are really good. Ilic as well in the midfield really impressed me. So they had the right game plan. And then you just knew, even when we're here, even when it was 2-1, you knew Juventus were going to come back just because of the quality and the depth that they had. Uh, they had Keza, they had Pogba, who ah, was able to so make for the first time. His he first, came in, yeah, first he made his first debut. Season. He came in as a sub, or he started. No sub. So. Yeah, he came in as a substitute. But they scored off of uh, set pieces, you know, in the beginning mm. of the match in in uh, in the first half. Uh, but then the the quality, you knew it was coming. Uh, this is like what we were talking about. Torino kind of died down a little bit. You didn't think that they were going to be able to last for a long time. This derby also has a lot of late goals. And, uh, and Juventus won. They needed to win as well because now they're 10 points from Lazio in fourth place, even with the minus 15, which is pretty incredible to say the least, that they're still there in poor match, hard opposition. Juventus won. Uh, and it was a, a thrilling match. And I think the fact that they got all of their players back is one of the things that finally yeah. Juventus fans can be happy about. It's good. Uh, the game started off good. It was exciting. Usually they're pretty low scoring, but this one was actually very good. But Mark, like you were saying, even when Torino was up, it's a shame. Uh, they play good, but they have nothing to show for. At the end of the day, you got even the last derby. They, I feel like they arguably played better than Juventus. Ended up losing that. And they gotta and they they gotta find a way to close these games out or be more convincing but in the back. But it's hard with the, the lack no, of quality. Get, like they have the game. Get, they, they play did it, well. They play well. Bro, but they, they did it against Milan. They beat Milan two times. Yeah. So they've gotten results. It's but, not like they just play no, good no, and then they get I'm no results. I'm saying the specifically. Uh, Derby de la Historically, Mola, just you know? look at the numbers. I think the last time they Torino won is 1995. It's mm. not an easy match for them, especially in Juventus' home at the stadium. A lot of them, are, uh, three of the goals came from defenders too. So a lot of the set, pie, uh, or set pieces, Bremer. they look Bremer sloppy. Had a big game. And Bremer they're had not man marking correct. They make these small, stupid mistakes that really cost them from all the hard work and uh, great game they played overall, I think. Fajoli as well. Fajoli had a good game. Mm. I liked Fajoli. Uh, but yeah, I, I think once once they get those players going, it's they're, they're, they're so hard to stop. And I think that they knew that they needed to win. Uh, Vlaovic didn't have a good game. He missed. No. He had he had a ball that was sent in from Fajoli that he hit the one. crossbar. But I think it's positive that Juventus do win even without uh, him there. I have a question because we asked people on Twitter from Ted Reca. Mm -hmm. Antonio, he's directing this one towards you. Can Pogba ever reach his old performance levels during his new spell at Juventus? Let me just say something about Pogba. Pogba, we knew it when he used to play on Juventus, the quality of player and the midfielder, what he brought into Juventus, the attacking style and all the stuff. But then, can he bring that back now? This is a, this is a, a big question mark for uh, for everybody, even including for the Juventus uh, for the Juventus uh, uh, establishment, uh, starting from the top, coming coming all the way down to Allegri, because they don't know what they're going to get back. You can never tell whether this guy is healthy 100% or whether he, he recovered. I mean, we were talking about surgery, maybe not, maybe mm -hmm. rehab and all of that stuff. I don't think it's going to be the Pogba that you were accustomed to seeing uh, many, many, many years ago. This is Pogba that uh, Pogba 2.0, which uh, with a big question mark. So mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I will be, I will not be 
I'm not going to be putting all my chips on him if I if I were uh, uh, the Juventus fan. Mike, do not do not set yourself up for a big disappointment because uh, yeah. you're not going to get uh, from Pogba what uh, you you thought you were getting. Yeah, Ando, unfortunately, I think I have to agree with you on this. I think just Pogba coming back to the league, I think it made everyone excited because he was so incredible the first time he came for Manchester United. So you want you wanted that passion, you wanted to be excited for all that. And unfortunately, yeah, due to injuries, he hasn't been able to play. This is, like we said, first appearance coming in. And hopefully he gets back on track and stuff like that till the rest of the season and help Juventus make top four. Who knows, make top four. The way it's going, they're playing very well, especially with Roma dropping points. But it's going to be extremely hard to see Pogba anywhere near the level he was once the f- at the first stint with Juventus, unfortunately. I, ho- I, I hope I'm proven wrong. But I think, he could, I think he could become really important for Juventus. Do I think he could get the level last time? No. But I think I always seen seen Pogba as he's not a midfielder that that can create a midfield. Like if if you're making me start a midfield from scratch, I'm a director. He's not the first person I pick up. But if you have a really good midfield, he makes a really good midfield. Great. That's what he did at Juventus mm-hmm. because he was balanced out with Pirlo, with Marquisio, with Vidal. This midfield doesn't have that, but I still think he adds a quality that they don't have. Like when I'm watching games and I'm watching all all teams play. Everyone has a midfielder that starts in the midfield and brings an attacking ability. Goes up, connects the midfield to the attack. I still see nobody at Juventus do that with a certain level of quality. He's the only one that's capable of really scoring goals when it goes towards the attack. Like, I know Rabiot scores. It's a set piece. He doesn't have that same quality as Pogba has. He's more of a workhorse, in my opinion. Who did they come in for? Um, I don't remember who I don't remember who he came in for. No, Locatelli was suspended. Uh-huh. So I must have come in my either for So that's my answer. I think he can get to a really great level. I don't think it'll be the same as before because Barinache. of the pieces around him. Yeah, no, it was Barinache, the the Argentinian midfield that actually first came, uh, first start of the season. Twenty one years old for him. Was he just, did well. He did well. He was mm. a little shaky, but you know he's I mean, a kid, so he's trying it out. Emotion, you know, I guess playing he's in to a derby in first debut. stadium. Mm. So for, to start big news. But for the Pogba mm. thing that, that you were saying, we do got to see how. When he's when he shakes off the injury, how he's gonna play when he gets consistent minutes? Because even at Man U, we didn't see the same. He was played out of position. Nobody at so Man U performed those years. I know, but he was playing in a different role, different position. After like a two, or th- he was there for like two or three managers. So before we say, oh, he could do this, he could do this, we gotta see how he is when he picks up consistent minutes, becomes a starter for Juventus, and then really classifying him for being out for so long. Out of the league from injuries and all this, all this culture shock to come so, back. So, so what did he do? I mean, you watch the game, obviously. No, he, he did three quarter to three quarter. What did no, he do? He play, I think he played 15 minutes. What did he come in the 75th yeah. minute, Mike? Yeah. Around there. The what, what position 70th. was he lurching around? Exactly like kind of where I said. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's really where he was. You know, the the problem with him is that he's gotten back, right? He's gone back into the team, and then he he has these muscle fatigue. That's mm-hmm. what he's mm-hmm. he's kind of had, kind of like even Kiesa because Kiesa's done the same thing. But we'll see what happens. It's going forward for Juventus. They're in a really great position. Position at the moment in terms of getting the results and I'm finally seeing the quality that we hadn't seen before but that's due to the players I mean Di Maria again another assist this is now five games in a row that he's involved in six goals his last five games the man adds a quality that I mean I cannot tell you looking back in the summer how many people thought that he was done he was finished since then he's won a world cup and he's been for me the best player in attack for this Juventus side let's talk about Milan mm. Oh boy. There's good news on top of good news. Mm-hmm. Which good news do you want? I'm gonna. I'm, I'll I'm, tell I got you right one now. and two. I'll tell you I have now. two things that I'm gonna bring up. Manyan. Wait, wait, wait. Which one do you want? One or two? Both. No, no. no. <laughs> first, first, do you first, want? First, give me the first. The first one. Yeah. Good news and then the better news. Whatever. Okay. What is it? The first good news uh-huh. is that, and this comes as a reminder from our good friend Nico, like your son's name, mm-hmm. Nico. Or Nico's Nico's Scott. Enrico Scott. Enrico Scott. Enrico Scott. Enrico Scott. Enrico Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys, because producer He thought about his cat before he saw <laughs> Who's the first person you think about when you say Bold. Nico? That is not a good Bold answer. Both is not good. So, and then we got Nick over here, though. No, yeah, we got Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nico Nicky. Molinari. So, Kylian Mbappé yesterday was at the uh, the Best Award show, and you know that Mbappé grew up as a Milan fan. Mm-hmm. As a kid, he always had the Milan jersey. I like him more now. I like he, him said, he said, if I went to Italy, if I would go to Italy... It would only be for AC Milan. Wow. He said that. How do you feel? People said, Antonio, what's your reaction that he's a Milan fan? 
and then we want I to like it. Milan. I mean, I like it. I mean, Mbappe is not, uh, you know, was never on the top of my list, but just because he mm. said that, now he's coming what? all the way, he's climbing to the top. Oh, so, you're uh, disrespecting him after No, I'm not disrespecting him. He's one of the best a, players in the world. It's not Messi, and it's not. They're going to have to sell half of the Galleria to be able to afford it. They're going to be playing with their socks. You know what? You know what? You know what? Mbappe, we don't, we can afford it. We cannot yeah, afford know, it. First of all, okay. but to dream, but still, to dream, nice. imagine a forty-year-old Mbappe and Milan. I don't, I don't believe in dreams. We we believe you in don't action. believe in dreams. We believe in action. We just get it done. Wait, you want to know something? Yeah, we made a graphic here. I'll show you. We made okay. this of a Mbappe and a Milan shirt. It looks uh-huh. good. And someone tweeted it. One of our friends on Twitter tweeted it and said, this is going to be the Lao replacement. Oh, and, and Lao, Lao actually liked the tweet. He liked it. it. Did? Yeah, Lao, Lao. So that means he wants to get out. No, that means that maybe Mbappe is going to come. Uh, yeah, okay. That'd be a nice one, though. Let me give, right? let me give we're going to we're gonna sit him on the bench. We're going to just uh, put him uh, on uh, in charge of the locker room over there, cleaning the toilets. Pe- playing left mid. Play I don't know. Three, playing left Saturnion. mid. Saturnion. Saturnion is the one who put mm-hmm. it. But Maldini is bringing us the Lao replacement. Saturnion. Okay. So did well, he? Did he? Do you think he's he becomes better than uh, best play, young player in the world now? Who? Or best player in the world, Mbappe, now that he's a Milan fan? Yeah, well, it's the, I, I put him on the top five, top four or five. Yeah, well, really? not the best, not the best. I can. Wow. I mean, I like him. Hey, I, just the idea that it's it's it's, it's hard on AC Milan. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's it. Damn, you're hard to please. Okay, so you're that was the first. That was the first good news. He's hard to please. Se- second good news is uh, I think it's fair to say that Milan have shaked off their difficult moment. They beat Atalanta in the most convincing fashion possible. It was. One of the worst games I've seen from Atalanta in a long time. I mean, I think it was the first time in in like 20 years that they had, or 30 years that they hadn't even had a shot on target in the first half. So really terrible from that side. But it was also Milan who limited their chances. And once again, the back three is starting to really come together in a way that, you know, at first when you went to the back three in the derby against Inter, I didn't like it. More so because like, forget about formations, your interpretation of the game was bad. You just sat back, defended, which isn't the Milan style. Now with Chao, with Kalulu, with Tomori, and then with Mike Magnan back, there seemed to be, I don't know, I don't know if it's true or not. You guys gotta tell me. Are they more confident, honestly, with Magnan back? Because they were yeah. cool, calm, and collected. How wouldn't they be, though? If they if you won a Scudetto with a keeper like that, the best keeper in the league of last season, you're automatically, before you even step on the pitch, you already feel more secure. Because like, if you make a mistake, you know like, he's you got know, your back. Yeah, exactly. Listen, this guy here, he doesn't sit on the back. He reads the game like a defender slash goal, uh, goalkeeper. This guy here... Un, in Italy, we used to call him un portiere volante. Mm. Portiere volante. A it, flying goalkeeper. Yes. It means that he's, in, he's involved into the action as mm. well. So yeah. he is very well playing from his feet. He's starting the action. He knows where the feed, when is when the ball is going to go long. And he just feeds the ball, even on a long toss, precisely to the players, the vast majority of the time. So having three defenders over there, plus... With the plus and one on the back of there, I call him the end one. It helps. I'm telling you, not helps. It's a huge yeah. boost of confidence. The defender, they don't turn around, try to look for somebody to blame. They know who they have on their back. Yeah, and Magnan is in charge. You mm. see the way, even on the set pieces, mm. he only has to look at, uh, at people. And I saw him in one of the set pieces. He <clears> brought <throat> one guy and he said, stay here. Don't move. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, what minute yes. was that? I think he, posi- he must have positioned. <laughs> what second? He read his lips. What millisecond? <sighs> he must have positioned. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Chow or was somebody else. He's just, don't just stay here. Don't move. So he's like a coach. He's. He should be getting so, double the salary. Uh, but on top of that too, Anto, with, with Manyan coming back, everyone feeling good. This guy Chow just came in and he's Beast. playing like a vet. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of. Kalulu when he first mm. came in and he immediately just fit in like butter with the rest of five, the team. Five million, he's Mike. He's 21 years old. Mike, and five he, million. Oh, man, it's Maldini insane. knew five million. Dude, he's you, in, he's incredible. You I, took the words out of my mouth. That he this fits guy, perfectly. This guy is the next Kalulu and he's going to just be, the three The three of them is going to be gelling. But like isn't a, that funny how like Kalulu is still so young, but mm-hmm. we're already referring to like Kalulu a veteran as, as a veteran type player. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 because yeah, of the growth he has. But you know, you know what's so smart about them? If you watched it uh, closely, um, Hoyland is the star player for mm-hmm. Atalanta, right? He has six mm-hmm. goals in the Serie A. Five of them came in 2023. Uh, he's the player that's valued at a lot of money. He's the big center forward. He's fast and behind. 
what Chow did, and I was watching this, I said, my gosh, he's so smart. Talk to he physically was trying to beat him up right in the beginning of the match. Hoyland wanted nothing to do with it. If you watch Hoyland's movements then, they were all out wide. Mm. They were not inside he the box because he knew if he went there, he's going to get hit. It's like a massive and I, I don't think that Hoyland really experienced that yet in Italy. Like He was able to get around with his speed, and he's very technical. He's a great player, but I don't think he got hit the way he got hit by the Milan defenders, and that's such a good sign for them. Yes, Milan already did great against Harry Kane, against Tottenham. They haven't conceded now in four games, right? Mm -hmm. Zero goals conceded. It's the first time all season that you win four in a row. So these are great stuff. And Atalanta, by the way, I was doing my research because stupidly I put a freaking bet. I put both teams to score and I lost my money. You know why? Because I looked up. That. Atalanta scored <laughs> Atalanta scored in every single away match except one prior to this game. They always score away because mm -hmm. their away form is mm -hmm. incredible compared to their home form. So to limit that... And by the way, the one game that they didn't score was against Asuolo when they had a red card. So completely different scenario. The fact that you were able to limit that was great. Moving forward, though, you know who's one player? Junior Messias, who technically, quality-wise, okay, I know you're, you're you're rolling your eyes. His work rate is, ima is amazing. Yeah, his work rate his is good. I think that's his best position as the right wing back because he has the, he the qualities to play in that, that position. He made a mistake. He ended up scoring to make it up. But I have to say, I, I give him credit. I never liked Junior Macias. He's not a player that makes me go crazy. I don't think he's good enough to play as a winger. But as a right wing back, he's actually good enough. You don't agree? Let no, no, I agree. I, I agree. That's is probably his only valuable asset. He's a hustler, and he he he's not a he's not a true goal scorer. We know that. But he scored a nice little dink over. He scored two goals in two games now, right? He um, scored the winner three, against Monza. Two goals in three games. But right now, I think he was it three. Yeah, two. Uh, you won't play no, Monza last no week. Way. Yeah, two goals. So in three Monza, games. and he scored now. You said he said three goals. No, no two. he said oh, he two, two goals uh, in three in games. three games. Yeah. But it's yeah. two games. Yeah. It's a better stat. Two games. Yeah, but uh. Milan play good. They look like they're back on in form. They're slowly, you know, they're... Theo's back. Theo's back. They have Manian back. Uh, Chao is a great surprise. But Atalanta, on the other hand, they they look really, 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 really bad. I'm not I mean, and I don't know if that's mostly because of Milan shutting them down, but they did not look themselves at all. And Milan played good. Uh, Milan played well in, in terms of pressing them, not letting them get chances. But Atalanta have to be looking out for the top four finish. Mm. And if they're not dropping points, it's Milan. They could drop points. But they drop points to Lecce but right before they lost to Lecce. If you drop points to Lecce, you expect them to give yeah, a 100%. fight to, against Milan, and I you agree. did not see that. Mm -hmm. So I'm disappointed in Gasperini because at the end of the day, that's his job. To Too many injuries, team. you think? Guys, one thing. They're, they're getting hit with yeah. a lot of injuries they at the are, moment. But, and they're on, not a team. An they're not a, no, it's not really an excuse. It's, it's a reason. Everyone's dealing with that. Yeah, but some teams have deeper benches than others. There's no aggressive. There's no Grinta from that team, especially. Especially from the forward line. Guys, you got to fight. Yeah, you, Lukeman, fight. Lukeman, you know what? The one thing, Lukman, I, I love Lukman. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But he's really hot or cold. Like, exactly. He, he's really good or he's when not he's good on. or he's not when good he's at on, all he's in some games. I'm starting yeah. to feel like. Which Marco, is, it's normal to go through in a season. Down. I, mean, I, I mean, the Atalanta, if AC Milan didn't bring the intensity that they brought to the mm. game. You guys play with fire. Too much. Yeah. We did fire. not let them think. We were just attached, just glued. Every yeah. abbiamo giocato a uomo mm. against them. Mm. Not too much. No, 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 no. Man to man. I seen Tomori following some of those uh, forward almost to three, to three quarter when they were back in uh, back in. You know the key of the game that a lot of people they haven't they haven't seen. It's Teo Hernandez' position right now. Teo Hernandez is not forced to defense and yeah. offense at the same time. Right now, Teo Hernandez is set or himself. He doesn't have to down. drop back as much, so it helps him in attack. It's right there on the exactly. midfield. He's got a lot more juice and he's got a lot more stamina to take this attacking yeah. line. Whether it's going to be on defense. the left or whether it's cutting kind of through the middle yeah. like that. Anto, I did so, some deep dive analysis. Like yeah. I, I spent hours researching this. Seriously, I went, I went crazy. I didn't even mm -hmm. do anything on my Friday night. And I came to the conclusion Regular that Friday Theo night. Hernandez is the key. with blonde hair <laughs> is the best version version of Theo Hernandez. Maybe I don't wish, maybe we should, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I had mean? a question. Maybe I should pin my head. No, my I head didn't Wait, that. what about his eyebrows? You could dye your eyebrows yeah. blonde. Yeah. Eyebrows? I don't maybe think I don't. so. You have no gray hair in your eyebrows, by the way. They're perfectly black. He doesn't have gray hair on top either. He just you chooses know, he to does. shave his head. He can yeah, grow hair right. if he wants. Right, Anto? That's it. That's what I'm saying. That's well, right. we can see the so spots. Anto, so, Anto, I was... Would you dye your hair 
Uh, never. No, yeah. no, you're, you dye your eyebrows blonde. It's all the if we if we uh, if we win the if, if we you go to semifinals of Champions League, I can't. He's do supposed that. to get a Milan tattoo. <laughs> I can't do. I will. Uh, that, that's on the uh, that's on the he's on the menu. I'm renovating <laughs> my house right now. Okay, Nick, okay. what are you laughing over there? Come on, Malinari is laughing. If Milan go to the Champions League semifinals, you dye your uh, eyebrows blonde. Uh, yeah, it's, semifinals, it's, what about to the final? Okay, yeah, you no, never hear. come on, semifinals. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Nick, am, I, am I on record? Oh so, God. Andrew, okay. hopefully, for Milan's sake, you dye your eyebrows blonde. I will, blonde. No But I just want to say, we complimented Milan a lot, a lot, a lot, right? But Maybe we got complimented Milan. We don't need your compliment. AC no, Milan. I'm saying all of us. I'm I know as much as, as you wait to do that. AC Milan deserves all of those guys. I'm yeah, giving them credit because they deserve that. it. But I got to say, let's be honest. Let's call the elephant in the room. What's going on with Giroud? I love Giroud and all, but... Yeah, but Giroud did a lot of work off the I ball, know, man. I don't know. I'm not saying... Bro, he set up the goal. I'm saying he set up the wise, first goal. What happened but he with doesn't, him? That's the thing with Giroud. Even when he doesn't score, he's so important but to the is team. It, but isn't that a little concerning? No, I'm not, I'm not really that concerned. Listen, the goal... Come on, he was no, on fire not. before the World Giroud. Cup. Yeah, but, that, it's, but it's, it's a good sign that they're still scoring Giroud. goals. They need to be more clinical, that's for sure. But the whole team was going through a terrible 2023. was unlucky. Leha was more of a concern to me. Yo, that is so wrong. You are so wrong about Leao and For I saw this Leao nobody realized it Leao got an assist number one number two he gave like Messi, two or three uh, balls that they should have been his assists yeah. as well Leao is playing know, great but Marco, he goes easy ball you have the better oh, yeah. but, but Leao is he's giving, giving everything but giving passes that his teammates are not scoring that's why he's not racking up assists he would have got so many more if his teammates knew how to finish like Jerusalem Jero was yes. very 100%. unlucky one with the ball that he chipped the goalkeeper by chance he took a, he, he hit his leg that was but from Brahim right yeah, I think Brahim yeah, gave that's a little it. Brahim's been working hard too Brahim so. is starter oh we didn't even say Zlatan back too Zlatan is Zlatan back Zlatan back 41 years Zlatan old Zlatan is back and everybody likes to play around him because this guy here they want to do the best they can and when they have Zlatan four. around the so, past five uh, competitions, he only had uh, in all comps. Uh, Giroud only has one goal. Past it's okay, games. Mike. It's okay as long as we won those keep games. scoring. Yeah, we won. I feel I feel a lot better going into your match against Tottenham than I did a little while ago because yeah, I know sure. I know Milan won the game one zero. I'm disappointed that they didn't win by more because I think they deserve to by the way they played. But when you go to England, it's a tough game. But with the new look defense and with the way the team's playing, it gives me a lot more confidence. The team that I have, I'm losing all confidence in. And I'm not even joking when I say I'm having nightmares. I'm having nightmares today. Roma, those it's bets. Inter. Oh, because they are consistently inconsistent. After beating Porto, we've said one zero. Seasons, yeah. After beating Porto, you go on and you lose to Bologna. Now two times in a row. After last year, you already lost to them at home in a terrible, awful performance from Inter. I am so scared for when they go away because their away form is shocking. It's shocking the amount of goals that they concede, mm -hmm. the way the way that they don't score goals. Home and away, it's two completely different teams. And for me, we've already been saying this, I have given up on Inzaghi as, is he a top coach? Is he a good coach? Your dad I, was right the I whole gave, time. Your dad so, was whole, right the whole time. I, don't want, I, don't want to say, right I, the whole I time. hope you're not listening to this. He's right. He was of course right, he's right the whole time. Okay, so let's make the distinction, right? Did Inzaghi adapt well with dealing with players that, that they lost, Inter lost, with the company of Inter, who is not a stable, it's not a stable ownership yeah. with what's going on. That transmit transmits to the team. Of course. That's great from him, but he is not able to motivate his team in the way that they need to be motivated. This Inter, for me, is better than what they are. He's not the top coach. Now, will they have to stick with him for financial reasons? Maybe. Or should they look... At maybe the guy that's right across from them, maybe like a Tiago Motta on go left field and get a young coach who could try to build a project, a coach like that, should be something they consider because the way Bologna play is incredible. If you watch the goal that they scored, you see the pressure that Dominguez puts on, um, on D'Ambrosio, I believe it mm -hmm. was. And that pressure forces them to lose the ball. And the movements off the ball are great because Orsolini starts running because he has confidence in his teammates that they're going to give him the ball. He scores the 1-0. Orsolini's been on fire lately. I think he's scored six of their last seven goals. And Bologna's form right now is top, top class. And it comes down to Thiago Motta because, unfortunately, they were not the same team at the start of the season, yet they have a lot of similar players. They were also missing Marko Arnatovic in this game. Mm -hmm. their, their boy, the Which best is a guy. big goal scorer. The tactically, they're just so well prepared. They've got courage. 
I love watching this Bologna side. I mean, first of all, I want to talk about Inter. I, even the past few months, we were saying I don't. I was saying I don't care what Inzaghi does. I have. I know the rest of the season is gonna be shaky back and forth. I think in the summer, Inter have to look for a replacement. I, I'm pretty sure that's on everyone's mind. I'm sure Peter's thinking that too. If he was here, Pete's coming back from Miami, so he's living the life. He's gonna oh, have a nice, little, a nice little life that is good. But I'm sure it's on his mind too. We're, that we're shoveling snow outside yeah, exactly. over here. This guy's in Miami getting a nice uh, tan. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, and Zaghi's got to go to a team that's fighting for top four rather than fighting for uh, Campionato. Because I was just before. Where he was before, exactly. Because I feel like that pressure does not dic- make, make, make him a better coach. Some Sometimes pressure makes a coach better where they perform under the pressure. To me, unfortunately, it's not in Zaghi. We gave him a season and a half so mm-hmm. far, and it's the same He threw away the Scudetto last year, thing. and we we allowed it. We said, okay, it's yeah. your first time coaching in a tough environment. For me, he's not learning from his mistakes. Exactly. There's same a lot thing. of players same, who I, I, I don't thing. understand some of his choices. He does really good against Porto, and then even Aslani is a player that... Where, where's Aslani? Yeah. Nah, he's not, he's been he's on the bench. Not he's Listen, not when, when I started to see the game yesterday, frustrating. Mike, when I started to see the game yesterday, yeah. I said, Barella is not there. Because I caught it to, to the end of the first half, into the second half, and then Barella, Barella. And then I said, my God, one nothing. I saw the beautiful goal. You woke nice up at goal. 6.30 for this game? Yeah. Oh, so man. then I said to myself, I said, what the hell is going on? You think then I see Barella. <laughs> I said, Barella is coming in. He's coming in. I said, what? How the hell are you starting a game without Barella? Who's got who's who's better than Barella? He came in the last thirty minutes. I think they probably underestimated. But Bologna this season have been doing incredible. They're, I, I have a stat. This they're I think a position away from uh, Europe. Right? Over their I have the, over their last six games they would be in third place. That's how good their recent form has been. Incredible. No, and they got two Greeks. Hirakopoulos came in at the end. Ligo Yanis didn't feature. But whatever. Yeah, she came in at the end. And Bologna, didn't feature. Bologna I with that. less I lesser than uh, than a great player. Like I want to say mediocre because I will take it away a lot of it. It's a lot of greatness over there. I see the fluidity that uh, Tiago Motta's put it into this team over here, man. And they were not guessing around. Bam, 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 yeah. bam, bam, bam. And they know where to be. Yeah. They know where to and be. And Lukaku, he, Lukaku. Because there is a formation back. Lukaku that's why. Always yo, I hate, yo, I can't, <laughs> honestly, I think that's my biggest pet peeve right now. When people say is that, everyone right? commenting, a 2-7-2 formation. Mm. BS. Because he, 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 he came out saying he plays a 2-7-2 formation. But he, he was up, down to up. He was just explaining that he sees football, like he wants two players on the left side, mm-hmm. seven in the middle, mm-hmm. which he counts the goalkeeper. He counts the goalkeeper as the first attacker, and he counts mm-hmm. the defender as the first uh, he counts the striker as the first defender, which makes sense if you just think logically mm-hmm. about it. But they use it as makes if it's the whole thing. Yeah, My gosh, know. I see so many people. Oh, how is he <laughs> succeeding with it. a two seven two? Please, if you're listening to this, just yeah. go read actually what he said. <laughs> It just yeah. like went viral, no, for I think. Sure. And on top of this, I mean, Bologna the past two seasons, they were one of those teams that, if as long as they didn't get relegated, it seemed like they were. Who did cool. they bring in? Who did they bring in? Remember, you and I were talking to this with Peter, which I think we need Peter to do a special video because we know Peter's great at uh, at these videos about directors. Sartori oh, oh, yeah. from, yeah. on from Atalanta, yeah. who the man has built. He helped build Atalanta up. He's got a they are the talent. unsung heroes in yeah. in the league and in in Serie A in general, in football in general. So I think we need to do. If anyone wants to see, sure. we were talking with Peter going back and forth. Corvino, Sartori, like. People that are not talked about, Juntoli, like off the field, Giuntoli, off the field. Look, behind Napoli, the look what Napoli is doing with Juntoli, yeah. man. I'm telling you, it's but just I, unbelievable. But yeah, uh, uh, this Marotta behind company, the scenes, they, they, I think they are on on, on the way. On do the way you really out. blame Marotta though? Like, I do. They have I do. no. They no. have. They're working with a Marotta. lot of problems. Yeah, they put yeah. their behind the scenes, Lukaku. they're not even getting paid by their sponsor. They're not even getting yeah. paid by their sponsor. No, they haven't been paid a dollar by their sponsor. Being talked about. Yeah, it's a very I think the ownership. Right now. I think they they need to figure out a way to sell because right now they're putting a team at Inter that had a good project mm-hmm. that was able to do something that they won the league. They finally came mm-hmm. back, and it feels like they can't take that next step because of the restrictions. So for me, yeah. I don't blame Marotta. I think that Marotta is dealing with a lot of issues. I think uh, secretly Inter is for sale because a uh, Goldman Sachs. I don't think it's a secret. Yeah, no. it's the, Goldman it's not a, Sachs. It's not a Goldman secret, Sachs is, uh, is, is trying not. to find uh, you know potential uh, suitors for. They're hundred uh, percent. There's the team. Americans that are talking to them. There's yeah. a lot of people that want Inter. I wanted to bring up uh, Bologna too. Hopefully got, with some good money. Yeah, we got to bring up uh, how great their season is. I I hope they make Europe, even though it's gonna be fun. Go ahead, Mike. What's the good news? No, I was just going to bring up a star that I think has been incredible. A lot of people haven't talked about is their left back, Cambiaso. Lately mm. for this season, uh, he got sold because Genoa went down. Juve and I think you, Juve brought him back on loan to Bologna. Big and man, this kid's good, man. Young kid. I think 
Mancini got to take a good look at this guy because he's he's a hustler. He brings in great crosses and he plays. He plays older than what his age is. I think he's twenty one or. Why do we years always old. get good players in the same position? Yeah, I, know. I left back because yeah. we have Parisi there's, there's on one side money, right? who's a great dribbler. Spinazzola is getting back into incredible form, and they're all freaking left backs. I Juve. He would have been a good replacement for Alexandro if you've believed in him and kept him. But like, he's not the biggest. Keep him. He's not they're the biggest Alessandro motivator. For and they're going to exercise the, the, the option. One more I, don't like, uh, I don't like renewing But Cambiasso, keep an eye for him because he's, he's looking good and hopefully gets that Zuri call up. You you know, one thing I noticed, we were, and Michael and I were talking about this when we were watching the games, when I saw Juventus' lineup, and now we're talking about Inter's lineup, the turnover. Napoli does none. They play their best team every single time. Like Sarri. Spalletti wants... No messing around. I think he wants a point record for Juventus. I think he wants to start games to win right away. Their game against Empoli is a perfect example. I thought to myself, there's no way he's going to play Osimhen and Kvara. Mm-hmm. There's no way. He's going to switch. He's he going to put the game up way right away and That's then he relax. It, period. That's how they do it. And Osimhen, when you're in this form and you're playing good and you're feeling good, now he scored for his eight straight league games. The last player to do that was Ronaldo. 19 goals this season. Full strength Napoli. They don't joke around. They want to win games. And I think it's an interesting strategy because he's trying to keep maintain this form. He'll sub them out as the game goes on. But I think it's very interesting the differences in certain teams that are playing all their starters, even in games that don't matter. For example, Roma against Cremonese. Six changes. Yeah. Most mm. that they've had all year. Mm. Right? A Cremonese who already knocked you out of the Coppa Italia. Yeah. I'm not saying that you, you can't switch players, but I'm just... Putting it out there, like look at the differences between certain clubs and teams. Yeah, in Napoli. I, to be honest, if they switch their whole eleven, I still think they'll get the same result. Just because I feel like they're flying high, everything's working perfectly for him, and it's it is a little questionable for me that Spalletti doesn't make more changes. I get it's working and stuff, but you are risking some things when you still ah. have, when you pretty much wrapped up the Scudetto, you still got Champions League. So I don't think I'm not saying. Uh, um, I know more about Leipzig, but I'm just saying, be careful with the because Osimhen came off with an injury. Thankfully, the last game, thankfully, it was nothing serious, and they played him to like the 80th something minute. I was like, give him a break. Well, the last I, 40 minutes, take him off, put Simeon in. Why are you playing uh, Osimhen every single game? Let me just Especially say something. Let me answer Don't to you. risk it. Don't no, risk it. I think I, I think you know I know. I think I know his mentality. Wow. If you see the car on the garage, or if you see the motorcycle, I'm not saying that. Let me just say something. Sit him. Please let me say it. Say if you see a car on the garage for a long time and you don't you don't put the car mm. on or you don't run the car, yeah. that car when you're starting, the it's next not time gonna run over, good. Not gonna run good. So you need that certain amount of, of minutes, all constantly yeah. on some of those yeah. players in order to keep them focused on the game and running. I'm not saying not to start him. I'm saying uh, playing less. Let me, let, let me just give you. For example, the parallel between now Spalletti and Inzaghi. Look what Inzaghi does. He sits Barella. And he brings him in when the game is almost out of hand. Inter didn't tie the game against Bologna because when you are, you know, under, chasing the game, chasing the game and struggling and trying to make yeah, things harder. happen and things it's like harder. that, the nerves they play a very bad game uh, on uh, on yourself. So, you know, especially in Spalletti, the back too, yeah, when you change the defenders. Absolutely, Spalletti's idea is, hey, let's bring the game very quickly. Let's put the, the let's put the resultato you know, out of the reach very quickly. One, two, three. It doesn't stop at the one nothing. It doesn't defend. So two nothing. Then it slow, 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 slows down. To the end, they said, okay, 10 minutes before, 20 minutes before, 50 minutes before, it rotates. It was players. the 84th minute when o- Oshiman came out. It was still Some of those people, they don't want to come start. out. They discuss those things, man. I know, but as a coach, you should know, it's not smart to risk someone he, like Oshiman who's been incredible. Well, I think he has seen that some of those players, they have that extra juice that you can keep them on the field. So, for example, AC Milan never brings Calabria for the full game. Maybe it's not fully healthy, whatever. No, Calabria has been seeding lately because we found this, uh, this three formation back. That is actually paying high, high dividend for us, and the fact well, that I think it was hurt. Huh? I think it was hurt. It was hurt, but even when he came, when he came back, he ne- okay. never came back. That we got so, a question from James Martino. Yeah. He says, "Is there any way that Napoli blow this Scudetto?" No, no. not a chance. It's gone. It's not the a is done. Eighteen points, especially because other teams aren't performing. No, you know what's you know what's one thing that I heard I'm from a Napoli I still fan. Still haven't celebrate. I have a fr- <laughs> I have a friend uh, Gio. He's a Napoli fan, and I asked him. I said, "Yo, after Inter won, uh, after Inter lost, lost, sorry." I said, "Dude, now you can't even." Yeah. Make up an excuse. He goes, you never know. They might take points away from us for the Osiman deal. He goes, so we oh. got to be careful. He's, he's joking. But 
No, I think, I think, it's, nowadays, I think right? it's not. I think it's going to be about when they clinch it. The date that they clinch it is more I think so. The next couple games. An interesting, be, uh, right? <laughs> an interesting question. Next game, they should get the trophy right. Luda, let us know. Okay? Magic, magic season. I hope they uh, continue this form uh, in the as we go League. forward in the into Champions the Champions League. League. Hopefully. Mm. They got to they gotta save some juice for Europe, too. Nah, That's, no, they have plenty of do juice. Mean? Don't worry about it. They got plenty I'm of juice. I'm just saying, be careful. You, they you go, never know what injury is going to happen. Marco, last week before the game, he said, oh, we don't know. You know, they, they, you know when you play away in the Champions League and all the stuff, I said they're going to win. So, sure enough, two nothing. It could have been more. You should have bet. They missed the penalty. Well, <laughs> So I wanted to bet. I wanted to put to put the bet, but I don't have that, that kind of a stupid app that you guys I got have. You. I'll yeah. take a fifty percent commission. All right, right. I take the fifty no, percent commission. I would be a millionaire by now if you guys would listen to me. Okay. Cremonese got their first win in the Serie A. That's wow! Cool. And it's come That's against true. Roma. They've now beaten them two times in this year. Uh, one in the Coppa Italia where they knocked them out, and now a second time Jesus. they scored first. They they scored a, off of a you know it's it's a it was a classic match for the way that I saw it. Roma started out great. High up in the field, looking for chances, blah blah blah. No shots, no ch no no real opportunities created. But what you imagine a big team and a small team. Um, Cremonese extremely organized, direct counter attack, play the ball uh, down. Shaju, great finish, goal of his life, Screamer. his second goal in this season. He loves to score bangers. Played at Ascoli, so that's how we were following him. They have these sorts of quality players, even like Okereka up top, who can create those moments. So that was sort of the game plan. Ballardini, we know how Ballardini is. He puts out a team that's always organized. So they defended well. They defended deep when they had to. They tried to break quick. And they caught Roma. But the weird thing is, Roma, yes, they started with... Uh, they started well, like I said. They started with six players that were different. But they scored the 1-1. And now when they scored the 1-1, when Spinazzola scores 1-1... One you minute, Mike, with a sixty-something minute. Oh, you have to put the game I away. said, "Okay, here we go." Now Tammy Abraham's coming on. Now uh, Solbakin is coming on. What All these mean, players. Tammy Abraham didn't even start the game. No, Tammy Abraham no, didn't Belotti start. Belotti. Started. Belotti started. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He changed a lot of players. Yeah. They brought on El Shadawi. They brought on a lot of players. I said, "Okay, here we go." Now they're going to score two-one. Game is going to be over. Yet, Rui Patricio takes down. Um, who was it? Who did he take down in the box? Um, Let me see. Why is his name? Uh, his name's escaping my mind right now. Mm. Takes him down, gets a penalty kick, scores the was penalty Okereke? kick. No, it wasn't Okereke. Just check. Did he get a red card? No, no, no red <laughs> card. Uh, penalty kick. They score, and uh, and and wow, uh, Cremonese get their first win. Roma with no ideas. So many poor performances from uh, key men. Pellegrini looks like a ghost of ghost himself. himself. Even DiBala wasn't good. Belotti is is awful. Zalewski played one of the worst games I've ever seen Zalewski play. Losing the ball, gets beat so easily. Don't know if he's really an attacker or if he's a defender. Mm. Yeah, it was Okereke, bro. Okereke didn't get the foul. He got, he drew the penalty. Okay, but who scored the penalty? Oh, that's a different question. Uh, Chofani. Chofani, there we go. Yeah, yeah. That's he, the name I was looking for. He got the penalty. I think I said both, that's why. Uh. Um, Chofani, and, and yeah. wow. Uh, perfect penalty, bottom left corner. Anyway... This is, I mean, Mourinho gets sent off. He complains after the game. He got sent off? He complains about the during, referee after the, the game. Match, he got sent off. Whoa. Yeah. And he's going to miss the game against Juventus now, obviously, because he got a red card. But what a disaster from a Roma side that, like, that we, we've, I've praised them for being mentally strong and having this, these characteristics of being good, but lack of ideas, mm. lack of fight. And I think taking advantage of a Cremonese side who they thought that they were going to beat. Once they go in the final third, uh, why not them come back to? Once they go in the final third, I just feel like they don't know what to do with the ball. They have players that aren't the same as last season. Pellegrini oh, looks like a completely different player. Dybala, mm. unfortunately, didn't perform today really uh, up to his usual standard. Bellotti is just there to hold the ball up and doesn't do uh, know anything else to do. Spinazzola is the only probably bright side in this team. He's the only one that's contributing to goals or assists or beating a defender to send a cross in, but they need, they need a lot of help. And I, Rui Patricio, he I, makes some bad yeah, mistakes. They need sometimes. a new goalkeeper. He makes some questionable. He does good saves, and then he does some questionable questions. How do you how do you, you're in this race for for the top yeah, four? No Atalanta good. Atalanta slips up, Inter slip up, right? Yeah. You have this opportunity where Juventus have the minus fifteen points. Lazio, Lazio, you would well. think that you're given everything yeah. in this to match against that. Cremonese to win because you could get top four. It's it's really there. Weird, weird. I, I don't like the... I got, I got once it. I saw six players missing, this was going to be... A I thought they could tie. I didn't think they could lose. But 
fair play to Cremonese. They played the match exactly how they had to play the match. They played organized. They played the way that they need to. They Do they lack in quality? 100%. Besides I, a few players, but well done to them. Congrats to them. First win in Serie A this season. I have a good feeling that uh, I, I, it's going to be between Inter Roma, Inter Roma, and uh, and um, um, Inter and Roma. They might they might just slip up uh, below, and then Lazio is going to overtake them. Atalanta, really? Atalanta. Mm. I, I don't think they have the, they have the juice and the quality to no. be able to, to make the Champions League. Me neither. So mm. uh, because still so many games. You know, Zapata so is not games. there anymore. Zapata was a big thing for Atalanta. How Zapata. about Lazio? Even more Lazio, 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 Lazio got Lazio got a Lazio, good win against Sampdoria. Me, Lazio, Lazio is, is the is the, so is the wild card. That was a tough match though. Yeah, Lazio they almost drew that game too. Okay, but almost. But yeah. the fact that they won it late, oh, the Luis Alberto scoring. Oh my God, that was incredible. They missed a million chances. Immobile was so Immobile was so off. They are frustrating, they but that, that, it was a test of character. Listen, Sampdoria are terrible they're last place in the way now. that they play. They're, they're, uh, they're, more, or, they're more organized now with Stankovic, if we're being mm -hmm. honest. like They're they're much That's more the, organized mm -hmm. in the way that they play. They just have no quality. Besides Winks, I actually liked Winks in the midfield for them. Solid. I thought that he was pretty Listen, good. Inter, but Lacho, hey, they found ways to win. You got to find ways to win. And sometimes the ball doesn't want to go into the back of the net. It was one of those games. Luis Alberto, Magic, outside the box, mm -hmm. Curler, huge game. They were just very sloppy throughout the match. Like, so many missed passes that mm. you wouldn't expect from a Lazio side that plays well. Savic was off his game, so. I'm surprised in Lammers, too. I expected more from him overall. And Gabbiadini is just not cutting anymore. Mm -hmm. And Claudia Arella is too old to even stand up. They have on no strikers. Feet. Listen, I they was have nothing in attack. Yeah. They have no, there's no fear Ga from the Today only guy. I was Sandoria. expected to see those three teams so on, on, on the second Sabiria, spot. Milan, Milan Inter, and Roma. I was Hesse. expecting them to fight for the second spot over there. So now we just left with Milan and Inter. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you something. It's between, I think Inter is going to drop. It might drop even below Roma. I think Inter is really? not. They have a match against Lecce this weekend. I don't weekend. know about that. They do? Yeah, Lecce. Ooh, Lecce with, with what? They're playing in... At, no, sorry. I don't think it's at Lecce. We'll check after. Let's finish the Let's finish the rest it's, of the games and then yeah, we'll preview ahead. and we'll get some more questions. Oh, about Fiorentina. Fiorentina. Oh, my God. 3-0. They needed, they needed this win more than any team's ever needed a win in their life because of the form that they were on coming into this. Great in Conference League. In Serie A, it's been awful. The fans have been protesting. The mm. fans want every player's head. Question marks about Italiano. He's too stubborn. He started Cabral, which they do play better with Cabral. That's without a doubt. Um, you know, their midfield was was on point. Their midfield plays great, in my opinion. Barak scored. I, I think that this player has an incredible uh, talent. I, mm. I think he's really incredible. He's that player, like I was saying before, Pogba, how he, he connects the midfield to the attack. He needs to be a little bit more decisive, but he's he's freaking amazing. I think you guys made a big mistake. You should have signed Barak instead of Pogba. I'll tell you, I like Barak when I see Okay, relax, too. bro. I s relax. <laughs> you watch. <laughs> you but, watch. Hey, yeah. Either way, they had the right attitude. They were pressing. Oh, they, they high press. They always play this way, though. For the most part, Fiorentina plays this way. They just don't score goals. Mm. It helped once I got the second goal. Uh, but you about know, Cabral goal? scored his fifth goal what in Serie A. Like his goal from his, midfield. Oh, Cabral's got five crazy. goals in his last four games, all competitions. So if he gets into form, <laughs> if they get a striker who puts the ball into the back of the net, which has been the biggest problem, they can fix their season. For me, that's the biggest yeah. thing that they're lacking. They have Cabral, Cabral right now for Serie A, and they got Jovic uh, for Europe. So it seems like they're clicking on different hey, competitions. But Fiorentina got to build off this a win. Question, is a question: Is Biragi's goal from midfield the, a praise for him, or is a, it's a, a downgrade for the goalkeeper for his position? He was smart. Stuff? He was smart. Yeah, he read he, the play. He did it quick. He did Nobody, it quick. They weren't paying attention. Yeah, he's, so he's, got, he's, got he's got actually meant it. Yeah, of course well, he meant it. What do you it. think you want to do? <laughs> Who thinks you? What do you? Wait, what do you think you want to do? Honestly, I don't know. I don't I'm know. asking you. Of course he, was he meant it. the ball. I think he was clearing yeah. the ball. But nah, he was smart to play a goal. Spectacular that ball. I can watch that. It did perfectly. But yeah. Verona, Verona, uh, the entire game, all I thought is, it feels like a bunch of random players on the bad. field together. Players that... No style. They went from being beautiful. They went from being beautiful to and watch last the year. Best players. With, with, uh, was the one of them. I mean, and with Tudor. And, and with Tudor. Tudor. And they sold Tudor was, they sold last year, players, Tudor man. is the thing that built up Verona. Mm -hmm. Sold too many players. And unfortunately, they get what they deserve. Uh, Zaffaroni's taking over the team. There's a lot of questions if Bocchetti is uh, Bocchet actually coaching or if it's Zaffaroni. They mm -hmm. were on pretty good form, but when I watched them play, I said, all right. 
Like I said, a b- bunch of random players, honestly, playing Damn. together. Yeah, I'm just looking at their transfers that they went out. They have Barak that left, mm-hmm. Gunther that left, Ilic that left, Amione that left. Caprati. <laughs> yeah, well, Simeone, Caprati. Yeah. They scored Simeone, 60% of their goals, Caprati, 70% of their goals. Casale, Tulazio. I mean, yeah. that's fucking uh, half it's your team. You like, get what you deserve. And then you change but your coach. Player. What they do you say? Well, that's player. why Tudor, but Tudor left because of that. He said, all right, I just did an incredible job with Verona. And then you're going to get rid of all my Cancelieri. players? They're going to be relegated. Oh, they, these Terrible. were all-star players for Verona. They were balling over Let there. Let them go because they, they've been nothing but bad luck for AC Milan. I want to see them I in like Serie Verona, B. Man. Goodbye. See ya. I don't want them to go. Oh, hey, okay. listen. I, I don't like teams that when you sell like that, I think you deserve they, to yes. go down. They they just deprive, deprive themselves from their best player. What the hell are you, what, what do you expect to win? Uh, I know. I know. I have a on. soft spot for them. But Devin, Devin asks, since we're talking about the relegation race, do you guys see anything changing in the bottom three? I'll read it to you. 18th place, Elis Verona. 19th place, Cremonese. 20th place, Sampdoria. Spezia are one of the teams that could get relegated. They're in 17th, three points above. Salernitana is uh, hovering there. And then mm. there's Lecce, but I think that Lecce, we wouldn't cover. I think so Spe- 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 Salernitana, Salernitana and Spezia. I think they, they might. I think it's going to stay as Verona, is. Verona stay, might, as is. stay as is. No, Verona might, they, they, yeah, they, they might catch up. You, I mean, like you know, know what? Spezia scare me. Spezia scare Spezia me. Aren't that good, but they're still better. They have more quality and attack than Verona do. Salernitana, Spezia, they, they spend do. the money. Salernitana is not worrying me a and lot. Well, Spezia, what's the quality? Yes. Enzola? Enzola. He's, a He's the only Enzola guy. A beast. <laughs> He's the only guy. He's good. Yeah, I know. Who do Verona have? <laughs> Verona uh, don't have look, yeah, Kevin Lasagna, bro. Respect. Yeah, yo, you so he missed. That, bro. He's he was in front of the net and he He's missed terrible. it completely. Oh. I'm like, bro, at least I target. It was so yeah, bad. Leao misses too with an open net. Everybody can <laughs> miss. The only one that doesn't miss is this guy here. Who? I don't miss. I have TV Antonio. I have TV Antonio. Yeah. You got that right. You know, the, only, play, that's the only thing is, like, I feel like there, there's this factor that can't be calculated into any stat, but I feel like I've seen it over my lifetime where a team that has been in Serie A for a while, somehow they usually manage to sneak out when they're having one bad season, right? Like, Sampdoria kind of did that a couple Genoa. times. Genoa, Genoa did that a couple yeah. times. But then, and then if you, but, but then Cagliari, if you keep, Cagliari, Cagliari, Cagliari. But then if you keep, yeah. if you do it again one more season, it's kind of like there's like one out, you know? It's yeah, like you got yeah, one yeah. strike. Exactly. And then if you do it again, then you're going to go down, which is Sampdoria is going to be the one that goes down. So that's why I think Ellis Verona might manage to stay. You up. think because of that? But For if they do it again reason. next season, then they're going down, right? Because even Spezia, it's like, like judgment day. <laughs> <laughs> I watched their game against Udinese, and I mean, Sotil went nuts in his post-match press conference saying, nice guys don't win in football. He said, you wow. need to be bad. He's got to be a bad boy. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah, you, when you watch him, Antonio's a bad boy. You're bad. <laughs> That's why he's saying this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to put this guy in the corner. He's bad boy. <laughs> You need bad, bad boys, what bad you boys. Do? What, what you gonna, gonna do? do? What you gonna do when it comes to you? Come bad for boy, you, for you, to you, the same thing. When relegation comes, when relegation for you. comes for you, bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> 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 We're gonna do it. So anyway, anyway, what do you do? I can play the saxophone. Yeah. You can play the saxophone. I can. Yeah. <laughs> you know why? I because, can probably learn because that. he sucks. <laughs> 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 sucks for, for people that is suck. Oh, yeah, go, oh, Mike. That's it. What else we got to discuss? Uh, oh let's discuss. Hey, let's. Why don't we finish up with the way we started with AC Milan being on the biggest? No, no, we already did. We already got it. All right, why are you? No, guys, we did everything. Yeah, we got everything. We everything. Right? Did you Let miss me check some Monza Salernitana surprise match? I came out of nowhere. I didn't watch the game. I missed the game. I saw the Tira G from Kulubali. Oh, Tira G. That was, that was dope, right? yeah. Beautiful goal. I was really surprised how Monza on this. Salernitana came out of came out of nowhere and just completely. Plummeted. Wow! Two Pummeled losses. Monza. Two losses back and back to back. But Monza's still safe. Whatever happens, they they over exceeded. I think everyone's expectations. I thought they'd be fighting. Uh, they'd be where Spezia is at this point. But you know, they got some good players. I like Monza. They're doing it well. They spent I money and they I got. Like Monza. They let's got th- good let's take a couple. Charge. Let's take a couple quick questions. Let's mm-hmm. answer these just like one sentence. One two sentences max. Hoove CFC Hoove. I think he's a Chelsea fan. What do you think the Serie A has to do in order to become the most successful, attractive, and commercially lucrative league in the world? Wow. I think a big step is uh, investing more in stadiums and infrastructure. And I think in the long run, have it private, privately owned, and you'll get more income for the teams, which will overall help with the budget and the mercato and help spending and attract 
bigger players with bigger salaries to fight off, you know, other leagues. I think that's a one big step. You know what's interesting? I uh, I was with the Chisana owners, who they're guys from Brooklyn, and I was talking to them about this, about uh, about owning stadiums. Oh, that and they Peter? say that that's actually not true. Yeah, mm. Peter Chacha. Mm. Uh, he says it's not true that you have to own a stadium. Because I said the same thing. I was like, oh, that's great. Like, you guys own their stadium. Help? If you want, no. So they actually don't want to own their stadium, as they were explaining it to me. And I'll break this down because I we don't I don't come from a law background I don't know this yeah. they they were very successful in real estate in New York and they say New York and London do this a lot is they get controlling leases they get ninety nine year leases which means that they still pick up the revenue but they don't own the soil you don't need to own the soil mm-hmm. around it nobody you owns just, the soil it's all uh, no, not even the in the United States you don't own that yeah, <laughs> the fact that you're a homeowner doesn't mean that you own the soil is, okay uh, I said soil as a representation of you own the property I'm yeah, just fighting you on that one Nick, <laughs> Nick, Nick no. what are you laughing about it, Nick okay point being you don't actually need to mm. own the stadium you need to have a controlling lease where they're having people come in they're having concerts there they're they're having mm-hmm. big People come there. They're making money. They hosted Italy. They had, Inter had a friendly match, I believe, against Lyon. They're making money off of that because they have a controlling lease. They mm. can invest, and because they have a controlling lease, you actually want to spend money on improving the stadium. Because if you don't have that, if you just lease it, it's like it's like renting, right? Gotcha. Yo, you're just gonna fix up for the owner, no? Yeah. But because they have controlling stakes, so maybe he says that that's one thing that they need to do more in Serie A is to focus on the leasing side because it actually benefits everyone. But okay. sorry, yeah, but one Italy, little thing. No, they actually, I, what, I, what, answer the question. Just go to answer this question. Um, all of the above or what uh, Mike said. and uh, still on my answers. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I would see that the, 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 fans, the fans, they need to be drawn in like a, drawn in like families. I, I when you want to see families going to the stadium. You do not want to see... Uh, just the, you know, the, the, the old style Italian said that um, you're leaving the ladies home. Comes and then safety. That, uh, yeah, safety has to come yeah, first. Yeah, so, so you want to yeah. involve more the family. When you see the English Premier League, mm-hmm. you, see the, you see the dads holding the kids and all the stuff and they sing. Italy's catching up with that, but uh, we need more. And the size of the stadium. Agree. The size of the stadium is very important. You do not need a 70, 80,000 uh, uh, spectator stadium. You need something like a... For a big city like Milano, Torino, uh, you know, uh, Bologna, whatever, or Napoli, or uh, you need maybe a 40, 50,000, but you need to fill them up mm. consistently and get get a, like a tight knit family that comes over there, meets at the stadium every time your team plays over there, and you're starting with a song, you're starting to to surround the stadium with the shops that the people they they need like family oriented you get the kids to the playgrounds and you get the i don't know buy some of the toys for the kids in other words make it a family experience because that that way all the families involved you go to the stadium before you go to the stadium you go to to have the kids playing around and then you go to the game and after the game maybe you go to the pizzeria you have to have the infrastructure around the stadium surrounding the sports and, uh, and promoting that sport. Like because a mall too or beautiful. something. Yeah, well, Juventus has that. Around. Like if you go to yeah. Juventus, it's an experience. You know, you exactly. go hours before, you go to the museum, exactly. you it's go to just, the mall. It's not just that. That's it, fun. There's revenue for so, things around. Yeah, obviously, also. I agree with every- maybe Maybe the mom, if they, if the kids don't want to go to the to the game, that maybe the mom can take the kids to the movie theater, which is going to be nearby. Nice bar, and yeah. Maybe I'll meet you guys after the game and we're going to go to the pizzeria. All of those things, they, they need to be surrounding the stadium. The stadium. So the yeah. stadium is like a, a point of interest. Yeah. No, we, we call it in it in an architectural term l'emergenza architettonica. L'emergenza architettonica is the building with the highest tower. Maybe it could be the church, mm. or it could be in, in this particular t- uh, case is the stadium uh-huh. and all the infrastructure around. They have to be uh, they have to be supporting and then in, encourage this family family event that on Sunday. Hey, it's Sunday today. Let's say even if your team is not playing home, you can still go around the stadium over there, watch the game, exactly. maybe on a big screen or things like that. And at the same time, go to the mall, go to the playground and make things Do happen stuff. for the family. That was yeah. a lovely one to two sentence answer from you. Oh, Antonio. I'm so sorry, man. Nick, that was too long, right? No, it's good. Uh, so obviously all of the above, the things that I'll add is I think that our rights deals mm-hmm. need to be spread out more evenly. I know it's a thing that we've discussed here. Um, you know, that there needs to be the teams at the bottom get a bigger portion of the pie because it's been proven in the Mm -hmm. Premier League that making a more competitive league overall helps us all. So I think that that's one thing. And one last aspect is like, I think our media is still not good enough. I think like what we do on social media needs to improve. Getting highlights out there, making it more visible. Let's be the number one league that's accessible for people to be able to watch and embrace Italy as a country, as the beauty of the country, which I still see we're doing it better but we're not there yet. And I think for the younger generation, they're more interested in things that go beyond the 90 minutes of the pitch. For the most part, they're watching clips. They're watching little highlights. 
you need to sell them on the story. Well, you know what? Let me add to that tweet and then we'll finish. I know it's like just a one or two sentences, but uh, you know, let's talk. You have to talk about the food of the city. You have to talk about the singer. You have to talk about the music and the sports. You play in Bologna. You play, let's say, Modern is nearby. The Ferrari is right there and the Formula One. You have to make the whole thing just gel together and just create a product that is uh, sellable at so many different levels. Okay, so and if you guys need a promotion, if you guys looking at me straight on you the you can on be the, the ambassador. Ice, we can IFTV can provide this service at the highest level. I don't okay. do balloons, right? Balloon I can animals, do the balloons. And I can blow them. I can blow the balloons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nicky, don't cut this. <laughs> don't cut this. <laughs> You're very quick. He was, he was good on that uh, one. Okay. Um, last question, and then we'll wrap up. Alessandro, hard one. Uh, I'll start since you guys might need a second. Start what one, the, bench one, <laughs> sell one. Quara Leao Di Maria. Start one, sell one. Start one, bench one, sell one. So I'm starting Quara because he's unbelievable right now and uh, he's young. He's the best player. I'm benching Di Maria to come in and to give me an, a great 30 minutes off the bench. And then I'm selling Leao because he gets the most value. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. I don't want to copy, Agreed. but that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. I would have said the same thing. I agree too. Whoa, actually, really? I'm not sorry. Loud, yeah, loud. Loud. It's not. It's not that hard of a question not to be fair. Yeah, it was, that was that pretty hard. easy. <laughs> Di Maria, there was a point you, of you, selling you, Di Maria. You, you get no money for Di Maria. He, I think he answered his own question. It is very obvious. <laughs> Are you calling Alessandro <laughs> Did stupid? You him? No, but uh, it's very hard to disagree with you, Alessandro. What I'm saying is that uh, we are we agree the way the way you put you put the question on the board is like a, it's a no-brainer for us. I mean, look at Leao. Leao is supposed to be producing so much, but uh, he's been a shadow a shadow himself. So I don't uh, agree with that at all. I think uh, that I think that he's been uh, growing a lot right now, growing a lot, and he's gonna score against Tottenham in the oh, Champions we'll League. We'll see. Uh, last question: Secretary Wandika. Wandika. What? Secretary Wandika. Wait, what are you saying now? I said the next question from Secretary oh, okay. Wandika. Okay. Wandika. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I don't know what you were saying now. For What's the Ibra question? should not renew with Milan. He's an unnecessary distraction. What's this guy? Uh, I, I respectfully disagree. <laughs> AC Milan is not in need of Ibra on the field, but AC Milan is needing, neighbor in, uh, is needing Ibrahimovic for his leadership off the field and is for his grit and his uh, communicating his, uh, mm. his demand to put everything on the field every time that you step on that grass. So, uh, and then I'm sure Ibra, it's it's uh, the, I like to say the, it's like the sne sneaky dog of Maldini because Maldini and him, they're best friends. They talk to each other and maybe Ibra is the one that just brings- he reports back? Yes. <laughs> That's a funny idea. Yeah. That's what I think uh, Ibrahimovic's role is over there. So what he does, Ibrahimovic brings what Maldini wants to communicate to the player into the grass. So you want one more year after this year? I do. Okay. Guys, thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we will see you soon. Ciao, Ciao guys. And Forza. Okay. Forza Milan all the time. And Forza Italian football television. Oh, God. Don't say television. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs>